All right, so today we're gonna show you how you protect your pomegranates from pesky birds. That's coming up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today, the end of August, we're getting towards the end of August and we're actually back here with our pomegranates. So we're gonna be talking about a new variety today but I wanna point out that right next to me is our wonderful pomegranate. So if you haven't seen that video already, I'm gonna link that video here so you can see our harvest of our wonderful pomegranates and this is the fruit laden version of our wonderful pomegranate this year. It is completely loaded with fruit. They're everywhere, it's dragging the tree down, it's amazing. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is the pomegranate tree you see next to me here. This pomegranate is our Austin pomegranate. Now, this tree is very special to Lori and I. In fact, the only reason we have this tree is because Austin is the name of our son. Uh, so we only have one child, uh, our son Austin. We love him. In fact, we love you, son. Uh, he's out there. He's 21 years old, so he's out on his own. We miss him. And so this is one way for us to continue to connect with him is to have a tree specifically for him named after him because it's literally named after him. It's our Austin pomegranate. So this is our Austin pomegranate. This tree itself is about a year and a half old. Uh, we put it in last month. I'm going to say late winter. Uh, I think it was February-ish, February, March of last year, so 2017. And here we are in August of 2018. And this tree is about seven feet tall, maybe eight feet tall. Uh, it's probably about six feet or so across. Um, so it's doing fantastic. And it has a really good, strong fruit set on it. Uh, lots and lots of fruit on here. Some of these fruit are about the same size as our wonderful pomegranates. So the size of a softball, and they're not even done yet. So now pomegranates. Pomegranates here in the Phoenix, Arizona area, these guys are ripe in the wintertime. They're basically a Christmas fruit um, is when they're fully ripe. Uh, and this variety should be no different for us. But one of the challenges that we have during the summertime is we get bird damage. And I'm sure, I, in fact, I know some of you guys um, out there do as well because you've reached out to me asking, hey, where do you get those organza bags? How do you do that? How do you cover them? Is it hard to do? When do you put them on? And that's what today is about. So we have our Austin pomegranate here. Not going to do a harvest off of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Lori squeeze in and show you what bird damage looks like so if she can squeeze in here got lots of fruit on this tree um, varying sizes of fruit but what you're gonna see right here is straight up bird damage so uh, we get this on our pomegranates we start seeing it now um, so we've got a curved bill thrasher that really loves to well thrash our fruit uh, and I've seen them pecking in these um, I've also seen we've got a couple of woodpeckers back here that like to peck on our trees and the trunks of our trees but um, I've even seen some of them uh, doing the same thing it's got a couple holes in it so this piece of fruit is actually no good um, so what happens is they peck holes in it, you know, they're trying to get the juice out of here because they're thirsty uh, or they're trying to get maybe some of the fruit out of there, but they peck a hole in it and realize, eh, not something I'm really interested in. They don't do anything else, but unfortunately, because that's open, it's now no good. Um, so what'll happen is mold will get in here, it'll start to replicate, bugs and stuff get into here, and it gets pretty nasty pretty fast. So what we do is we actually leave a couple on the tree, um, four birds as they come back, so to let them actually continue to peck at those. Uh, but once we start seeing bird damage like that, which is now the middle of summer, we gotta do something about it to protect our fruit. Otherwise, we will not have a harvest because they'll literally go from one pomegranate to the next damage all of them and leave just a single peck mark and then you're out of luck so we'll feed this to our chickens crack it open and the chickens love to have that so we'll come back to that but what I wanted to show you is what we do to actually keep birds off of our pomegranates now it's not a hundred percent effective but I'm gonna say it's about 90 to 95 percent effective so what we use is an organza bag uh, I'll link our fig video here in fact our first one where we talked about organza bags you'll see me using that on our figs which by the way are right behind Lori um, so we're back in that corner of the farm uh, but but uh, it's a smaller fig or a smaller organza bag. So those figs are small. Uh, obviously, pomegranates get to the size bigger than a softball. Um, so those small organza bags are simply not going to work uh, with something that gets to this size. I want to say those are like a three by four size, so about a three inch by four inch size, give or take. Uh, we get those on Amazon. Um, and these are a little bigger. So this organza bag uh, is a six inch by nine inch organza bag. And these work about perfect. Uh, the largest uh, wonderful pomegranates that we get that are literally bigger than a baseball. And Lori can nod her head yes or no to tell you if I'm exaggerating, because I do from time to time. But they're about that big. Would you say they're about that big, Sweets? 
sure <laughs> I might be exaggerating but they're pretty big okay um, so when they get really big like that uh, they get pretty close to bursting the seams on some of these but those are the wonderful pomegranates those are the biggest pomegranates that we have uh, our Austin pomegranate shouldn't get quite that big so we're gonna use this now to actually protect them from bird damage so what I'm gonna do just kind of looking at these there was another um, smaller pomegranate right next to that one uh, that doesn't look like it has any damage at all I'm looking for anything uh, shouldn't have any cracks yet and we don't because we water consistently um, there's no other damage no scratches or anything and there's no peck marks from a bird so all you do with the organza bag you just take this guy here and if Lori wants to slide in I'm gonna actually remove the leaves that are close to the fruit um, because we don't want to have anything stopping this from getting a good seal all I do is just take it up and I slide it up onto the branch that the pomegranate is touching and zip it nice and tight um, so we've got a little bit of branch because um, we don't want birds to come in this way and then of course there's plenty of room for this pomegranate to continue to grow it's going to continue to get sunlight um, and what I'm going to say is again that's about 90 or so um, percent effective at keeping birds from continuing to try to peck into this fruit so this one should be good for us come December so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this tree really quick we're going to go ahead and cover all these and show you what that looks like in the end all right, so we just finished, took us about five sweaty minutes uh, getting this thing covered. So we just uh, concentrated on the Austin pomegranate this time. We're gonna get to this wonderful pomegranate, which has got a lot more fruit on it. But we wound up pulling five fruit off the tree that already had some bird damage on there, but we're saving 40. So we've got 40 fruit on this tree that hopefully will be right come December. And because of the organza bags, we should keep about 90% of those for ourselves as opposed to feeding the birds. So that's how you cover and protect your pomegranates. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. And you know, if you haven't done so already, hey, subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you as a subscriber. You know, we talk about a lot of different things here, but really concentrating on fruit trees here as we go through the summertime. Wanted to share our Austin pomegranate with you today, but we've got a lot of videos like that coming up. So hey, subscribe to our channel. You know, if you have any questions or comments, hey, leave them in the comment section down below. You know, we found that using organza bags on each individual um, fruit particularly with pomegranates works great for us. But hey, if you got some other ideas or suggestions, hey, leave them in the comment section down below. And hey, any questions or comments, Lori and I really enjoy reading through those and interacting with you guys and YouTube's a great format for that. We'd really love to do that with you. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Okay, so today we're gonna be showing you what you do when you got, <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing with my arms. It is hot out here. Mm. Okay, so today we're gonna to be showing you what you do when you have birds attacking a really cool fruit that is kind of unique to a Mediterranean type. That's way too much information. I don't need to say all that stuff. Nobody cares. Okay, so today we're gonna to show you how you protect your pomegranates from pesky birds that like to jam holes right in the middle. That's too much information. I'm gonna get this right. S simple intro and we're, we're dying out here. <clears throat> or kind of just show you different varieties. Today was the Austin Pomegranate, so really enjoy you joining us. And hey, subscribe. Man, it's gonna keep, well, I'm gonna keep saying that. I only gotta say it once. And if we can survive this heat, cause man, it is sweaty, so can you.